So I'm unsure if I've just never noticed this before, or if the game is glitched because of the randomizer. But for some reason, Sakan is a ghost. He just straight up runs through the wall. <laughs> Where is he going? Maybe he's going into a Mario 64 level. That's probably what it is. Interesting, Sakan. I feel like you're Sakaning us right now. Anyways, welcome back, my patriotic pinatas, to Tutor. Or Zooter 2. I still haven't fully decided what I want to call the series. It's up in the air. We have time to figure it out. And today, we're going to start off by going to the Temple of Time, also known as Tot. Oh, what the heck? How come we keep on running into all of the enemy music and the like, boss fight music? This is the most aggressive seed I've ever come across. Although I've only played like two seeds with the music randomizer, but still. So we're going to start off today by pulling the Master Sword out of the pedestal of time. Do you guys see that shadow? It has like a mind of its own. Well, I guess that makes sense because there is Dark Link in this game. So technically Link's shadow does have a mind of its own. It's not out of the ordinary. Oh, look at that big boy. Looking good in his teal... Uh, wait, what? Uh, a piece of heart? Why did we just get this? Oh, that's right, because we have the Forest Medallion. And since we have that... Sheik will give us the Prelude of Light, but since the songs are randomized this time, give us a heart piece. Thank you, Sheik. Very cool. Very cool. So yes, today we're going to start off as Adult Link, and since we got the Gold Gauntlets last episode, which is freaking crazy, can't believe we got all three strength items by episode two. The chances of that happening are, are kind of near impossible. Oh my gosh, I literally can't take anything seriously anymore with this because of this Long Long Ranch music. I mean, you hear Redead screams. Are it, is it the Redeads or is it Navi? The world will never know. But yeah, since we have the Gold Gauntlets, we're able to go inside Ganondorf's castle. Because as I mentioned in the first episode, on this seed, I had the Rainbow Bridge open from the very, very start. But in order to beat the game, we still have to take down all six barriers inside Ganondorf's castle. But this just adds like an extra area for us to have to go to to be able to find chests and stuff. This is the least fitting music we've found so far. <laughs> Sorry, a song inside Ganondorf's castle. It's so peppy, so optimistic. But yeah, so since we have the gold gauntlets, we're able to pick up this gigantic stone pillar down here. And there is a lot of treasure chests back here. Like, we pretty much are getting the jackpot super early on. Like, I like how Link cracks his knuckles before picking this up. Crack my own knuckles. Is it actually bad to crack your knuckles? I've never been sure. Oh yeah, we don't have the lens of truth, so we gotta deal with invisible enemies. Where is- oh, it's a Skulltula. That's right. I don't know if I can kill the invisible enemies right now, because I don't have- Oh, I do have a weapon! <laughs> and we just got Deku Sticks, a Deku Stick upgrade. That's like, perfect. Um, I forgot we have the Master Sword, since we're Adult Link. We don't have to worry about the Kokiri Sword. Wait, why is- the outline's red now. Wasn't it orange? Or did something happen that made it red? Or are enemies red and like L targeting onto signs and stuff is orange? Who knows? <laughs> I think the funniest comment I saw on the first episode though is how Navi turns from being orange to black. Somebody pointed out that Navi's like really a huge fan of Orange is the New Black. Ugh, a poopy. Gross, we don't want that right now. I didn't think about this, but are the keys inside Ganondorf's castle randomized as well? I didn't even think about that. I don't- don't give me all these rupees I can't hold. Holy crap. This is not good timing for that. I should have gotten like- I should have went and bought some beans. Both Deku stick upgrades? This is so- I was gonna say that's unuseful, but now we have 30 Deku sticks. That's actually pretty awesome. Especially for young Link. He's gonna have a lot of weapons now. So this definitely works out. <gasps> Sun Song! That's actually great! We don't have an ocarina to play it yet, but whenever we get the ocarina, we'll be able to, you know, transform it into nighttime whenever we want. Hell yes! Fairy Bow, that is what's up! Boy! Wait, we can shoot Navi down. Navi, this is what you get. Okay. That's rude of you to try to evade my arrows. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be killing my fairy. That's not very nice. What type of example does that set, Tyler? 
think of the children. Which, what? Are you actually kidding me? We just found the hookshot and the fairy bow in the same room. Like Ben Shapiro would say, okay, this is epic. <laughs> well, now that we have like doubled up on having good items, freaking fairy bow and hookshot, this has been a, a pretty good seed, I would say, so far. And then on top of that, the seeds keep, it keeps on like, giving us lots of hearts and heart containers. Can we go through this now? We can. Since we have the hookshot, we can do this room as well. We can get a couple... No, stop. Bemos. Stop eyeballing me like that, boy. Don't want to deal with you. Uh, but as I was saying a little bit earlier, um, I need to t take off one of the keys from the Garuda training grounds because... One of the keys we got was actually just for the fortress to like save the carpenters, but I'm not going to mark that on the thing. I'm just going to remember that we have keys for the Gerudo fortress or Gerudo, however it's pronounced. Don't want to start mispronouncing things already. Okay, let's take out these slugs. The best way to take out these guys would be a Louisville slugger, but unfortunately we're not Ness, so we don't have any bats or anything. But yeah, we can do this room since we have freaking bomb trees already, too. We've just been getting lots of good items. It seems like a lot of the trouble from this playthrough isn't going to be from having to find items, but rather from having to find the keys for the dungeons. It's, it's going to have its own struggles. Oh, damn. I also just realized that we can go ahead and do this room since we have... Oh, no, we can't. Never mind. We need fire arrows to open that up. If we had the magic bar, we have Din's fire. We could have opened it up with that. But for now, I think we're only going to be able to... Where's the invisible chest? It's right here, right? Don't want to forget this chest. Uh, another piece of heart. <laughs> this seed really does love us. I love it too. Can you get married to a video game? If so, I'd totally get married to Ocarina of Time. That'd be so romantic. <laughs> Would it be? The Stone of Agony. Ugh. This thing causes me so much agony. Why is it called the Stone of Agony? Is there any lore behind that item whatsoever? Like, where does it come from? Who made it? It slightly breaks the fourth wall. Is there anything that, like, kind of unbreaks the fourth wall? I don't know. Isn't there two more chests we can get down in the ice cavern area as well? I believe so. Let's go ahead and clean up Ganon's castle while we're at it. We're getting tons of good stuff. It's like a shopping spree. Let's go shopping. Oh, an arrow refill. Nice, nice. Replenish the three arrows that I used. And a key for the fire temple. Now, the fire temple has the most keys in the whole entire randomizer. Somebody actually left me a comment. I'm going to read some information from it because I think it's kind of good information. But they let me know how many keys every single area had so we can like, keep that information in mind. Um, so the Gerudo Fortress, first off I want to note that lots of, a couple people asked like why I didn't have the Deku Tree or Dodongo's Cavern and stuff on the key list. And that's because the child dungeons don't have keys unless you count the bottom of the well. But that's the reason for that. But let's see here, the Gerudo Fortress has four keys um, for all the carpenters. The bottom of the well has three keys, Forest Temple has five, Fire Temple has eight, um, Water Temple has six, Shadow Temple has five, Spirit Temple has five, Garuda Training Grounds has nine, holy, and Ganon's Castle has two. So those are all the keys we're looking for, and I think Ice Cavern has one as well, doesn't it? I believe so. Back to our super unfitting music. So I think next we're going to head back to Dodongo's Cavern so we can actually beat it this time. I don't even know why I went to it in episode one. Like I was really trying to show off the fact that you can go anywhere you want in randomizers. But I didn't even take into account that you're supposed to do Dodongo's Cavern as an adult in the randomizer just because it's ten times faster. That's what I did in the first Zooter and I was like never do a Dodongo's Cavern as a kid. And then what did I do? I went and did Dodongo's Cavern as a kid. Like a big chuckle fuck. But... That shit happens. Also, for a few people who complained that the music is a bit too quiet in the background, I apologize. I'll turn it up a little bit. The thing that's kind of scary is I don't want to make it too loud because of the way the content ID system works. 
Sometimes it'll pick up the Ocarina of Time music and Nintendo will steal all of the ad money, which is very unfortunate, so I tried to avoid that situation. I'll dang it, I was gonna play the Sun Song, but I can't, because I don't have the Ocarina. I don't know if it was a good idea to turn that on in the randomization or not. Like, that could come back to bite us. Because the Ocarina, like, it could be anywhere, guys. And it's so vital for progression. Ugh. That might have been the worst mistake in my life, but we will find out the further we go through this randomizer. Alright, let's fight our favorite ghost, Domp Bay. Maybe he's a bit more ghosty than Sakandam was <laughs> at the beginning of this episode. This music is so unfitting, like, none of the tracks fit the environments. So, like I said, we only have to race him one time. Because the randomizer now gives you the option to, like, turn off repetitive things. So you don't have to race him twice if you don't want to, if you check the option. Woo! Now you can race him a second time, and you will get a prize, but it's guaranteed to not be a item that, like, helps progress the game. So you don't have to worry about that. And we don't have to worry about the stress of trying to beat this race in under a minute, which can be very, very stressful sometimes. Oh, damn it. Don't be burning my asshole, dude. Ooh. Just trying to dodge all these flames. I don't know why he drops his fire on us. Like, I'm not sure if he's just trying to be an asshole or if he's trying to make a path for us. Or maybe a little bit of both. Who knows? <laughs> I love this music, just making all of the areas that are supposed to be dark and mysterious or scary. It just completely ruins the atmosphere and mood. But that's the comedy of this series. For if I ever do do a Zooter 3, which what would I even call that? Thooter? <laughs> I guess. It sounds like I have a lisp. Thooter. Alright, Dompy. What you got for us? Piss. <laughs> that sucks. Okay, so we're not able to get rid of this Temple of Time block, so I have to try to lock myself in here real fast. There we go. That's how it's done. That way we don't have to hard reset anything. And I'm trying to think. So we're able to, if we can finesse it just right, I'm able to get that heart piece inside of the windmill. I'm going to try to do that. I did it on one of my streams, and I want to see if I can remember how to do it now. So let's go find out. Oh no! It's the Zora Domain music! Which I love this music, but the downside about this is that it's gonna take away the opportunity for this music to be anywhere else. So this room is literally the only time we're ever gonna hear this wonderful tune. That's so sad. <gasps> yes! There we go. Perfect. Just gotta jump correctly. Oh, this is the best episode of my life. I can't, I'm so happy I came and got this. That's kind of weird. Now that I think about it, you're required to do that. Like, if you didn't know you could make that jump, you would never come up here and get the ocarina. Because normally to get up here from that direction, you got to play the Song of Time to get rid of the Song of Time block. But you can't even do that without the ocarina. So you literally have to do this like kind of weird glitchy skip thing in order to get the ocarina in the first place. But this is such a great place to get that because now we can piss off this dude. Never forget. <laughs> Why? Stop giving me huge rupees! Stop it! Let me go freaking buy beans first before you give me all of the large rupees in the game at once. That is not okay. And now, thank God, I can play the Sun Song real quick, and we can talk to Andrew as well. All right, is she down here? Yes, our favorite ball smacks. <laughs> ball smack? <laughs> I meant to say ball sack. Our favorite friend that smells like a ball sack, Andrew. What you got for us, girl? Yeah, I'll help you out. Sorry, a song. That's really awesome as well. That's gonna allow us to get a lot of nice stuff. Uh, now we can go get some things from the Lost Woods later on as well. And we can also make Darunia the Dancy's boy. Well, I didn't even mean to roll into that. That was an accident. At the very beginning of episode one, I also made that joke where I call myself everyone's second favorite Ocarina of Time YouTuber. 
and everyone was like, who's my number one then? And the answer is obviously PewDiePie, who you should go subscribe to, so T-Series does not take over. I just realized the initials for Death Mountain Trail are DMT, which is that drug that helps you sleep, or it helps you dream, something along those lines. DMT is like a really interesting drug, because so whenever you die, your brain releases a whole lot of DMT, which is the reason why we see like dreams and stuff. And it pretty much makes you hallucinate, which is why a lot of people say they like see their life flash before their eyes before they die, is because they're pretty much like having a million like dreams at once. They're pretty much hallucinating a lot of times. That's why I think a lot of people when they see like they die and they feel like they see the afterlife or they see heaven or whatever. I'm 90% sure that's pretty much just DMT happening. Like if you're dying, you're probably thinking about heaven and stuff and your dreams can be controlled by your thoughts. And so if you're dying and you think about heaven and when your brain releases all that DMT, you end up pretty much dreaming about heaven. So the people who like ended up coming back to life, they thought they saw heaven or something or hell or whatever they envisioned whenever they died. DMT is a super interesting drug. I would encourage people to like do research on it. All right. Something that this song randomizer is making me realize that I didn't notice originally is like how repetitive some of these songs are. Not repetitive, like not like the composition of the songs, but like how often they're used. For example, we're hearing this song in Dodongo's Cavern. We heard it in Dompe's Grave. And I think we heard it in one other place too. Like it's everywhere. We can't escape Kokiri Forest. But it's okay, because it's a very nice tune. I'm still rather upset about that whole entire situation with Zora's Domain, though. That kind of sucks. <gasps> the Dungeon Fap. Sick. Alright, bye, boy. Da, 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 da. He's spinning around at the rodeo. If I ever threw a rodeo for my viewers, it would be called a hodeo. And it would be the best party on this side of the Mississippi. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Navi keeps on giving me heart attacks. Maybe I should turn down my game volume and my headphones a bit. It's like a jump scare every single time it happens. This is probably the scariest Let's Play of Ocarina of Time that anyone has ever watched. And the stairs keep tumbling down in the dungeon that we love. And when you close your eyes, ayo. Hey oh gosh, I actually hate that song. I don't know why, but I dislike songs that have AOs in them. Something about AOs just trigger me. Like, AO, AO, AO. That type of stuff. Can't stand it. <gasps> oh my god, we got a nut! <sighs> so nice. Getting a lot of good stuff in the in the Dong Dong Cavern. I don't mean, like I said, like, we shouldn't have come here as a, as a kid, because as an adult, you just blaze through everything. Because you're just so tall. You can just reach all the ledges. Lots of people are surprised to find out that I'm tall whenever they find out. And lots of people ask how tall I was. I'm 6'4", so I'm a really, really tall boy. And lots of people are like, oh, you're so lucky that you're so tall. And it's like, yes and no. There's pros and cons to being tall. For some reason, lots of people find tall people to be attractive, and I don't fully know why because I don't think tall people are attractive like I personally think shorter people are more attractive and maybe that's just because people are more so usually interested in things that are a little bit like different than them but one of the biggest downsides to being tall is whenever you go to amusement parks roller coasters and theme park rides were not built for tall people they're built for average sized people since they're trying to appeal to the basic common denominator Look at this! What even is this seed? This is literally the luckiest seed of our life. <laughs> like, it'll probably get way more difficult later on. But as of right now, I'm pretty impressed by how our luck is turning right now. I can't even decide, like, is this finding all this stuff make this series more entertaining or less entertaining? I have no idea, but <laughs> hopefully more entertaining. Like, that's what I'm hoping for. Fingers crossed. Is this the last treasure chest? No, it's not. There's a few more treasure chests. Ice arrows! <laughs> I literally don't even know how to respond at this point. We're just getting everything. <laughs> but yeah, like as I said, roller coasters and stuff are not made for tall people. 
I've had some really bad experiences on roller coasters where like I don't have enough leg room and my legs cramp up like really bad as I'm riding the coaster because I can't like stretch them out at all. Like one of my worst experiences, I talked about this on my Planet Coaster series, but I got a Charlie horse while riding a roller coaster in Silver Dollar City back in Missouri. And like I'm deathly afraid to ever ride that coaster again because I'm just so afraid. Like I literally, the ride started and right was that we were on the chain lift. I got a Charlie horse on my leg which is like the most painful cramp you can pretty much get. And it was just like one of the worst experiences ever. And I'm always afraid that it's gonna happen on a roller coaster where my legs are like kind of shoved in. So I don't think we're gonna be able to beat this right now because we don't have any more bombs. We can go buy bomb shoes, but we don't have any right now. I should have bought some before I came. It's okay though. We can still go down to Goron City and get a couple things there. Well, I know one thing we can do is we can get that third treasure chest that's in that room full of all the rocks. Since we have the gold gauntlets. We really need to find Zelda's lullaby though, because I want to start tackling these fairy fountains. There's a lot of them. They all probably have something good for us. Oh! I love the puppy so much. I like really want a pet right now, but since I'm living in an office, I can't really do that. I'm considering trying to convince the other office mates into letting us all have an office cat that I would like pay for and take care of. Because I feel like that would be the most epic thing ever, having an office cat. Like who wouldn't like that? <laughs> who would complain about that? Um, the completionist and some of his friends, whenever they come to record, they always like bring dogs with them. And dogs are great and all, but they bark. I, if dogs didn't bark, they would be 10 million times better. Like why did they have to be cursed with such an annoying sound? What, all these are back? I thought I could pick up the regular rocks, too. I guess not. Wait, why can't I- oh wait, I forgot you can't pick up the rocks. You have to use the Megaton Hammer. Why did I think I could pick up rocks with the gold gauntlets? Oh, I think it's the gray rocks that you can pick up. That's it. Alright, so where are we going next? I guess we can go to Lost Woods. Why not? <laughs> Makes sense to me. And also for those asking, the upload schedule I kind of have planned for this series that I'm going to try to stick to. Um, sometimes life gets in the way and things don't always work out. But I'm going to try to upload the series in spurts of two. So I'm going to upload two episodes and then the third day I'm either going to not upload or upload something different that's not uh, Zelda Ocarina Time Randomizer. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba. But I'm going to do three episodes in a row for the first three episodes just because because I love y'all. I want to give a good start. But I want to like give a day in between episodes just so people can have time to catch up. Because I know uploading every single day can be a little bit difficult for some people to keep up with. Like I know for me personally that type of upload schedule. Like when people upload daily series, it's hard for me to personally keep up with their series. So I try to keep that in mind when uploading content myself. Because I know you guys have busy lives and sometimes it's hard to watch like a 20 to 30 minute video every single day. Even if you want to watch the video every single day. And then if you like get too far behind in a series, you sometimes give up just because you're like, oh, it's too hard to keep up. Why is the Deku scrub not here? I keep on like going for stuff that I think I can go for, but there's some things don't appear at certain times, I guess. Like that's only there as a kid. Wait, we can still play the Saria song for the Skull Kid, right? That's an adult thing. Like, I'm pretty sure that's an adult link thing. So let's go ahead and finish off with that. Oh, this dude right here scared me for some reason. Oh wait, don't attack me, boy. Oh shoot, I forgot he shoots me too. Skull Kid, don't have to be so violent. No need for that. Gotta set a good example for the children. Wait. This does work as an adult, right? Or is it a, I can't remember. <laughs> like I said, there's still like so many things you can do in this game. No, I don't want to talk to Saria. I didn't want to talk to you either though, Navi. <laughs> That's not what I was asking for. Well, crap. I want to at least get like one more thing before I end off this episode because I haven't gotten anything in the past like couple minutes. Wait, can we buy some of these bomb shoes, little guy? Because that would actually come in handy. They're so expensive though. 60 rupees for freaking five of these things? Should I get more? Is that worth it? I guess so. 
Although I'm gonna be like buying these bomb shoes and then we're not gonna find like another rupee chest for a long time since I found all of the good ones this episode when my wallet was full. The worst. Okay, for some reason I thought I had to play Zelda's Lullaby for Mido, but then I remembered you actually play Saria's song. So, we can go ahead and squeeze past him. That melody, Saria plays that song all the time. Do you know Saria? Apparently Mido can't recognize people when they grow up. <laughs> At the same time, he probably wouldn't even remember what we looked like as a kid. Since it's been seven years, he probably forgot about my existence, to be honest. So I remember our first time doing Zooter, we found the hook shot underneath this stone right here. What's gonna be behind stone number two? Moo. Wait, what? Why did that not deflect? Bounce. Wait, what? Does the mirror shield not bounce off? <laughs> Freaking nuts. The mirror shield likes to devour the nuts. I surrender! Yes, I will buy this from you. We have three keys now for the fire temple. That's pretty nice. That might be the first like adult temple that we hit up if we can. And we have, we can actually. Yeah, we might do that next episode. We might go to the fire temple. Although we don't have the fire tunic, so that might be a little bit difficult. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and end this episode right here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I'm going to do a comment question for the day. If you could possess one item from Zelda Ocarina of Time in real life and have it work the way it does in the game, which item would you choose and why? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll talk about some of my favorites in the next episode. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.